was all impromptu. Sure was. <laughs> Welcome to Beats and Brews. Thank you, Aaron. Everybody, this is Nick Heffron. How's everybody doing this evening? I hope you guys are doing good. Looks like um, we've got some people in here. Yeah, just a little bit. So if you're uh, if 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 you're in here, throw some hearts in the chat. Throw some hearts. There we go. Let's get this going. I got Brandon Gray in the room. Shoo wee. Shoo wee. How you doing, Brandon? <laughs> so what's up, Aaron? Man, things are great. I'm just so stoked to have you on the show. Um, this is the first time that we've done this live. Um, so there's going to be some learning curves along the way. And I'm I just honored to be in the inaugural episode. <laughs> yes. I, I just ab appreciate that you're here, man. And Absolutely. Um, I really wanted to kick things off with... Um, a good homie yeah and someone that i felt comfortable with and just throwing you to the wolves tonight i love it that's like one of my favorite things is to be thrown to the wolves that's why we work well yeah. together <laughs> are you uh comfortable behind the kit oh yeah no this is a beautiful beautiful kit awesome i appreciate it so um we gotta we gotta start every episode cheersing cheersing hold on and so today we are drinking 50 West's Coast to Coast IPA. It's one of their flagship IPAs, and um, they're right down the street. It's one of my favorite breweries in town, and I just, I just once again felt at home having 50 West be the first beer that w we're sipping on tonight. Absolutely. Uh, again, flagship, staple. Yeah. I asked Nick, hey, what beer do you want? And he said IPA, no hesitations. So, um, no hesitation. Yes, I love <laughs> it. I'm so stoked that you picked this. Um, oh, there we go. Some more people are. I see uh, coming in. Noah Smith in here says he's here for this. Uh oh, big old families in the house. <laughs> big old family in the house. It ain't so bad around here. Mm mm. That's what they say, at least. That's what I hear. All right, so let's just get things started. Let's do it. Give us a little bit about your story, how you started playing music. Well, how I started playing music, my dad is a uh, was a musician throughout high school and college and everything, and uh, he taught me how to play keys because he's a piano player. And um, that was about the fourth grade, and then sixth grade, you know, I was like, I want to play rock and roll. I want to grow my hair out and play guitar. And then so I did that, and by the time I got to uh, to high school, I started playing in a band, and. I was, in, I was playing in a couple bands, but I was always, like, the guy that, as soon as we were done playing, I was always, like, jumping back on the drummer's kit and, like, always just, like, beating around. and like Always I, noodling. Yep. And they're just like, man, can you just, like, stop for one second? There's, there's always one in the band. Right, exactly. And I'm Everybody <laughs> thinks they can play drums, so the second you get off the drums, like, they shuffle in. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But I was always that, like, oh, man, I need to get, get behind there. I just had so much fun with it. And um, my brother, what, he's two years older than me, and uh, when I got to high school, he was a junior at the time, and uh, he was starting this band, and it was just him and a bass player, and they were like, yeah, you know, we're looking for the drummer, we're looking for the drummer. And so I, like, my, my parents bought me my first drum kit for Christmas when I was, like, 15, you know, with, like, the old, like, I mean, old crappy cymbals and everything. I had a traffic cone that I had an old mic stand that I used as a crash cymbal stand. That's a first. Right. <laughs> had to get, ha yeah, I had, I was like, I want three crashes, you know. But, um, so I pretty much, like, learned the drums, like, to play in that band. So it was, um, it was, like, kind of an eye-opening thing of just, like, you know, I'm going to take on this instrument to be in this band because I wanted to play in a band with my brother. So, and that's where kind of that all started with that's beautiful. getting to this point of my musical journey <laughs> yeah man so i i was watching will's podcast uh, yeah. with with adam lee yeah. um yesterday and they were talking and they they had a really good question they're like yeah what is nick's main instrument and so you're a multi-instrumentalist um mm -hmm. you know you're either out there singing playing <coughs> drums playing keyboard playing guitar playing bass is there one instrument that you really feel like I feel like it I feel like it varies so I feel like it's kind of what I'm into at the time so when I was in Infinity Spree and playing with Abby Vice and everything I would say that I was a drummer like drums were my main instrument 
But as of right now, I'd say guitar is my like primary okay. at the moment. But it has switched over the years. Like it just very like non-committal <laughs> answer. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I like to I like to keep things I like to keep things interesting. So, but you started playing drums though. I started playing piano. Oh really? So yeah, I was I started playing piano and got my way around that. And then when I got to playing guitar, mm -hmm. drums were actually the last thing that I got into playing. Gotcha. Cause like you know you pick up guitar and it's like oh bass is the same thing, which is a myth. But you know, as young budding bass players, we just think you know. It's the I can same play thing guitar, guitar. That means I can play bass. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but so yeah, um, I don't know. It's kind of like you know choosing your favorite kid. You know, it's like how do you yeah. how do you how do you choose? But my favorite instrument to play live on a stage mm -hmm. is drums. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. That's awesome. Even though I, I love to move around and romp around and everything and mm -hmm. I'm behind the kit, I just feel like I can exert more than I can on any other instrument. Yeah, man. So when you're playing with Sunday Drives, yeah, and I know that you have this little electronic pad. Right. Does that Do you still like playing that as much as acoustic drums, or are you no. just fitting uh, what the music calls for? So... It, it it was kind of a way of like getting drums onto a stage without loading in an entire kit. You know, I'm loading up a piano and everything and <laughs> Yeah, the whole band. Right, exactly. And it, it just kind of like for having just Adam playing the guitar and then me playing something, I just feel like if I had a regular acoustic kit, mm -hmm. it would just sound like, Well, where's the bass player? You know, yeah. it's like so I, I don't really use like acoustic sounding patches. I always use mm -hmm. like real electronic y sounding things to kind of give it that vibe so it doesn't just sound like, oh, it's a drummer and a guitar player playing and it just ca sounds kind of empty in the middle. Yeah. Right. Then you get to the point where it's like, well, where does it end? Now that he brought a full drum kit out. Right. Now you need a bass player. Now exactly. Now you need another keyboard player. Right. And I, right. I, I know you and Adam hold that really that project really close to your hearts absolutely and so not just anyone can walk in uh, into that fold <laughs> no it's a it's a it's a very different way of playing it's and that's what i love playing about uh, playing with adam is that he is so unorthodox and he is so unconventional mm -hmm. and when uh, like the guys that i play with in in other bands they're all like music students so they're all, you know, very by the book and they know everything but i came up as like a self-taught guy so when yes. adam's like you know, I don't know my this and that or, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, ah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Like, that's no problem. Like, I g grew up playing with this guy who played bass that he was an amazing bass player. But if I said, like, play a G sharp, he'd be like, mm, I have no idea. But if you started playing the groove, it. he would just start destroying it. So, uh, <laughs> so. There, there's definitely something special about that. Absolutely. And depending on who you're playing with, uh, that could be an issue. Right. Uh, but it definitely seems like you guys have a beautiful musical <coughs> language that you you both understand and it, it is different when you're in a room with musicians and you're speaking one way and they're speaking another sure and uh, yeah it'll it'll always come to a head at that point but yeah. but no me and adam just the way that because coming into the project i knew that's like this is adam's writing style mm -hmm. and this is what i love about it so i would never try to change anything about it so anything he comes at me with it's just like well, we're sticking to that, and then I'm going to add what I can. Right on. So, yeah, I would never push him in a way to be like, you know what, you should maybe change that. Like, uh -huh. no, no, the guy is a, he's a legend, so <laughs> you, don't, you don't mess with that process. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I mean, I, it's clear to me that you guys work really naturally together, but how was it when you guys first got in the room and started jamming? Was there some learning curves on your musical language, or did it really just fit right in? It kind of fit right in, mainly because I was just because I was a fan of his mm -hmm. prior to that. It wasn't like like coming into this band is the first band I've ever been a part of that I didn't have to like start it. You know, we weren't like sitting around like, what are we going to call ourselves and how are we going to sound and everything? It's like I stepped into a project that was already well established. So I like that. So it was just like pretty much just like, all right, I'm going to have him play. And I'm just going to see what I can do to it. Mm -hmm. But Adam has played with a lot of guys through the years, and he has always told me that as soon as we started playing, it was just like something clicked. And it yeah. was just like, I feel incredibly comfortable with this. And it's like, I love everything that you do. Because he, he, he doesn't really push me either. Like, he'll be mm -hmm. like, you know, 
can you change this? Can you change that? But he's never like, I don't like that one part you play. Like, don't ever play that. He, he never <laughs> says that. So we kind of yeah. give each other a lot of freedom, which which makes it cool. But again, just being two guys, it's also very, um, it's very easy that way mm -hmm. because you're not kind of bouncing ideas off of four or five people. You know, one guy had a bad day, so no matter what you say, he's like, ah, oh, man, fuck this or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like, so there's none of that. I mean, we have we can make whole decisions just over a phone call and that's like pretty cool we don't have to like be like oh we got to check with so and so and check with so and so yep. and check with so cuz yeah too many I mean, cooks in the kitchen is a real thing oh for sure but just being in a band with five guys or something you know lining up schedules that's one of the hardest things ever when i see bands get together in a room mm -hmm. with like six or seven people i'm like wow how do you do it right <laughs> how do you how do we do what make the music no how do you get everybody in the same room at the same time that's the hardest part <laughs> for sure you know, I, I think it's time for me to crack another one. Crack another. Brandon Gray says, talk about them harmonies you guys destroy. Shoo wee. I can talk about the harmonies. Talk about the harmonies. Talking about the harmonies. So the harmonies are a lot of fun. Because, again, Adam is such a kind of unorthodox guy in everything he does and his singing approach is you know it's self-taught and he'll tell you that he's not a good singer but that's a lie bullshit that's a lie 10 out of 10 people say that's a lie so that's all cap but um the fact that he is so different is that like my harmony like he hits real interesting melodies so mm -hmm. like coming up with harmonies to it is just like a lot of fun and like i kind of I consider myself kind of like a one-trick pony with the harmonies. I'm always just like the third above, like okay. total country harmonies. But that kind of has, from doing it so much, it kind of has made that harmony, like his voice with mine, the third above, is just kind of the sound now of just like that's yeah. what Sunday Drives kind of has turned into. And so um, Your signature sound. Right, exactly, you know, so that – we could get on someone else's track, and if it was just like him singing and me harmonizing, people would be like, yeah, that's Sunday Drives. Mm -hmm. That's Sunday Drives for sure. Um, but the harmonies are just so much fun because it is a challenge mm -hmm. to, to kind of get into his realm of songwriting and then adding things on top of like that, even vocally, yes. A lot of fun. Yeah, so man. shoo we. Great question, Brandon. And if anyone else has any other questions out there, uh, please chime in. I'm trying not to get distracted with the right, so that live. <laughs> I'm like right. talking to you. So there's not just like me. footage of us <laughs> just like, okay, okay. <laughs> so um, it's funny that Brandon does mention the harmonies because that is one of my favorite parts uh, about you and Adam. And um, Thank you. In fact, that's my wife's, <laughs> one of her favorite parts as well. Mindy Roy in the house. Yeah. So my, my wife is uh, video switching for all you people out there. It's so. like live television. She's in the booth. She's like camera two. Camera three, camera four. Yep, there she is working her magic. <laughs> this this couldn't happen without Mindy. So thank you. Big shout out to Mindy. Yeah, um, yeah. So Adam and Nick um, on occasion come over and record some songs on the drums and everything you hear on Medicine Studio. Music. Every drum track you hear is recorded on this kit right, right here. here. This is all the magic. It is, and that is a fantastic kit. I I look forward to drum days. So much. Thank you. Adam Adam always is like, you know, he always is like kind of like, you're always real excited to go over there. I'm like, oh, yeah. You should be. <laughs> I'm excited when you guys come over. It's it's great. And oh, yeah. You know, you got the you got the French press coffee in the morning. Yeah, it's all buddy. The, you know, I like to record in really dimly lit rooms. And yeah, it's it just <laughs> knows the vibe. Aaron Roy is one of the most accommodating hosts you will ever have. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, since Noah's there, he's got to have his uh, Nog Champa. Oh yeah! Oh, of course. <laughs> Which Noah I, Smith I can in the room take in in small doses, but oh, that guy bays in it. <laughs> he does. Um, I love so you, Noah. Speaking of you guys coming over and recording, what what do you guys have on in the pipeline for this year and releasing um, some new music? So <clears throat> we're it's kind of, so with this this project has kind of just been an ongoing thing. Releasing something that you know is eventually going to be like. 25 songs that's under the title hashtag medicine music and wow. just 
going with like album or volumes one, two, three, four, and five, it's just kind of like an endless like, oh, we're plugging away, we're plugging away, and we're actually into volume three right now. So it's kind of a crazy thing because we were like, oh, this is going to be a massive undertaking, five holy peas, that's wild, and it's like we're already like halfway through it. Yeah. It's like kind of cool. It's like, man, I didn't know if, uh, like how fast it would come together or anything, but mm -hmm. just plugging away, um, we got – some cool out of town dates this year. Uh, we're probably gonna get out to the East Coast. Um, playing our first show in Columbus this year. Oh, Columbus sweet. is a is um, I love that town, but it's kind of like kind of hard to get into. Yeah. For our Cincinnati folk. I mean, it's like an hour and a half away, right. but there's not a lot of places to play there. Or uh, maybe there are. I Cincinnati. feel like <laughs> right, right. I, I, there, there are. I feel like it's like they they have a lot of good things going on up there. It's just like to. And it's hard to take a chance on a band that, you know, it's like, hey, we've never been to your city. Can you please put us on? We'll draw a lot. Right, right. <laughs> we'll, we'll bring a lot of people up. And yeah. Like, we're there to make fans and everything. But, it, you know, you know how that is, cold calling a venue of just like, yeah, you know, we've never played there, but we would like to. But, yeah, we got mm -hmm. we got that coming up, and that, that should be super fun. Uh, got a lot of things coming up in Nashville. 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 <laughs> The, that's the magic word. Yep. All you got to say is Nashville. Nashville. All of a sudden, oh, 30 more people just joined in the room right now. Go. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said the word. No. Um, Were you at the Five Spot or the Cobra something or another? I don't know if I should say this. I don't know if it's the name. Oh, you haven't released it yet? We're playing at the Exit Inn. What? Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah, man. It's, it's super Mic cool. Mic drop. Right. Yeah. That's it. Mindy, cut the string. Yeah, roll the kidding. credits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's badass. yeah. Uh, we're playing with our boys from Beyond Here that we just brought through. Well, they booked themselves at the Comet and yeah, they yeah. came through and we opened up for them. And that was a fun night. Oh yeah, those are our those are our dudes, and they they've just been cooking since 2019 and prior, and they've got some really cool stuff going on. Uh, then we're trying to do. <clears throat> I was talking with Adam the other day about possibly doing a residency. Mm at a place and making it kind of more like about the other artists like the other and like kind of theme it around you know it's like we'd have like a big rock show one night or like mm -hmm. a hip-hop night and like we would play at all of them but just kind of like curate a cool kind of month-long thing to like mainly as like a community building thing because we don't play a lot in Cincinnati during a calendar year because we try to focus more on out of town and mm -hmm. this recording thing but just having something that's kind of consistent and people can come to every week and, you know, they'll know the people that are there the next week and it kind of just builds this kind of community that we're trying to get together. Where do you plan on having it at? That's, you... that's, that's kind of the, that's kind of the uh, magic question at the moment of just where to have it at because I want it to be able to host like full rock bands mm -hmm. comfortably, not just like, uh, well, you know, we'll throw you in the corner and everyone will just have to suffer through how loud it is i can think of right. a couple places <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah so i want to have something that has like a stage and everything then and, mm -hmm. and yeah to you know maybe like a place that serves food or something to like accommodate everybody and yeah because yeah i don't want it to just be like a hey it's a four band bill you mm -hmm. know pay at the door drinks are out the ass you know yep. Oh, you want food too? So right. you gotta oh go across God. the street right. and you can't bring it in. Right, yeah. You'll have to go out, eat it, come back in. I know it's cold outside, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know For sure. so you mentioned something funny that you guys are from Cincinnati. Correct. But you don't play in Cincinnati much and you focus on other markets. Yes. Isn't there something special about being out of town and just playing for strangers oh, and like, We live for it. We live yes. for it. It's not just like about it's not just about, you know, it's like we need to be out of town because that's what we should be doing, you know, strategically and everything to build mm -hmm. these markets. There is something, and me and Adam talk about it all the time, and the pandemic really kind of really starved us of that of a long time, and we didn't even get back on the road until November of last year. Yeah. And so it was, you know, over a year that we had been out, and Adam says it's like, you know, payment or whatever you know like i just want to like get in a room with you and like play music to strangers because you know the people here you know we love them and they're our family but mm -hmm. you know we 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 love to like take it out somewhere else 
And yeah. and for to, to just see those looks of kind of like, huh, what is this? Or like to like see them kind of fall in love with it. And we also just love again, kind of community building. When you're a touring artist, you know, you have to be out of town, like, mingling with other bands and other, you know, because then, you know, their fans become your fans and you can share fans and you bring them back through your town and everything. That's how it works. Right. And that was another thing with the residency I wanted to do was, like, to, you know, have bands in from Cincinnati and have, like, a cool local thing, but then also Mm -hmm. bring in, like, our homies from Indianapolis or our homies from Nashville that, like, even, like, our fans have never seen because they've never... (laughs) traveled with us to those places yeah and so then you know it like gives them the exposure and everything so we're just trying to we're just trying to do do good things for our homies because our homies do good things for us so that's how the world works exactly. man. exactly and of course it's all it's, about back scratching yes <laughs> and it's nothing against our cincinnati friends it, no it's just something beautiful about being on the road in foreign places yeah uh playing to a whole different audience on a different stage working with a new sound guy that and I think a lot of exactly. Cincinnati bands, I, anybody who's in here saying this has probably heard me say this a million times, but people take for granted how centralized Cincinnati is. Mm-hmm. Like for a touring musician, you know, it's like for, if you live on the West Coast, it's like you pretty much, if you live in California, it's like if you want to tour, you just tour in like other places in California or else you're driving like 18 hours to get somewhere. Yeah. But here, it's like you drive an hour and a half south you're in Louisville. You drive an hour and a half west, you're in Indianapolis. You drive an hour and a half north, you're in Columbus. It's like these are good big markets that yeah. are like very close. And then you have like the other window of like the five hour where it's like St. Louis, Chicago, Pittsburgh, Nashville. It's like these yeah. are, and that's an easy day's drive. For sure. And so it's like I tell a, a lot of Cincinnati bands that because, you know, they think that touring is like kind of this big undertaking. And mm-hmm. sometimes it can be if, you know, you're going on a big long run and, you know, you don't know that you pretty much have to pack like a, like a, like you're going on a camping trip. <laughs> yeah, pack a cooler. Right, pack exactly. A it's bag. like the van is the tent. So <laughs> yeah. think of it like that. Yeah, that's <laughs> very like, well put. Right, because yeah, you know, these guys will go broke out here because they're like, man, we have to eat out every day. It's like, oh no, never, yeah, never I'm not do even that. Making that much. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I'm going in the red for this. Right. But yeah, so it's like easy drives, and and that's that's kind of what we're focusing on this year too. We're not trying to be. We're not trying to go too far out because, again, with touring, too, you have to keep it realistic is that if you go and play a market, you know, when when are you going back? You have to pretty much be thinking of your next time going back or else, you know, you you make great fans there and then four months go by and they don't remember you. Yeah, exactly. You got to continue to build it. Exactly. And then hope that there's more people the next time than there was the the time before. So we're, we're, we're trying to play a lot more live this year, but... Just in those kind of puddle jump cities like right Columbus, on. Indy, Louisville, and like building a lot of those kind of communities, mm-hmm. even if it's just one offs and stuff, just like going that way. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Um, Trying to stay busy. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, with that being said, you and Sunday Drives. Yeah. You and Adam are awesome. Thank you. However, you're also kind of like a freelance musician, correct? I'm a career musician, yeah. So I, I don't have like a like an office job or anything like that and play mm-hmm. music on the weekends. Like I do play music as a, a living. So I do have that element, and Adam knows that. And have people be like, like, what does Adam think about you and other bands and stuff? And like ten other when bands. I what, like Adam when I when I joined Sunday Drives, I was in three other bands, and he knew that coming into it. Yep. So it's not like, you know, it's like, you know, I had all my time for Adam and then told him like, hey, man, I'm actually going to start playing all these other things. Like exactly. he, he knew I was he, in into all that because I play, you know, in a wedding and corporate band. I play, well, actually with you. Yeah, but, um, looking forward to that. And then, yeah, I do freelance <laughs> things for anything, uh, guitar, drums, hell, bass. But uh, just like just like anything that'll... It's like anything that'll pay the bills. So. <laughs> I, I respect that. That's really cool. Um, so, right now, how many other projects are you in? Let's see. I would say this, this season. I know legitimately it just just the wedding and corporate band. Okay. And Sunday drives, and then I play solo. Right on. A lot, and then I'll have one offs uh, like at the uh, Rock and Revival mm-hmm. at um, Southgate House. I'm sitting in with uh, Rosewood Coast, the band on oh, cool. guitar. I played bass for them uh, on Fountain Square back in September, 
but then they like they needed a sub and then i was like are you playing there already i said yeah so yeah I'd go play electric guitar for yeah, yeah. one one set and just uh things like that but i'd say like s concrete projects just probably blue water kings and nice sunday drives so your scheduling it isn't too difficult would you say or, or does that provide some challenges um it definitely provides challenges because a lot of my saturdays are taken up with weddings and things like that so mm -hmm. um it it's kind of hard when especially if it's like something like really cool like really soon mm -hmm. you know adam will hit me i'll be like dude super cool thing and like three weeks and i'm like Shit. this wedding's been booked for five months <laughs> right. <laughs> right and like i and i've i've never let anything come in between sunday drives and me yeah i will find a sub i will do anything i can to make sure that that happens because mm -hmm. at the end of the day that is my that's my passion and everything i yes. know i know the other thing does pay the bills but mm -hmm. at the end of the day i'm an artist first so that's awesome that's yeah. that's beautiful to hear thank you um, so I'm going to go to the audience. Do you guys have any questions out there? I'm scrolling through here, seeing what all we missed. Let's see here. Let's see. Uh, if you do have a question, just go ahead and chime in at some point. We'll try to Noah take says, care. I want to be the guy that hangs out in the background and Googles everything. Like, yeah, Noah, can you check that? Can you... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you'll be the Jamie of our podcast. I love it. Noah, can you check that for us? So Said, wait, who is that? Someone says if I click my heels three uh -oh. times, Aaron will start playing that banjo. All right, I'm I'm gonna go play the banjo. Well, I don't know if heels were clicked. I That's true. We we got to see the video of the heels being clicked. <laughs> Brandon Gray <laughs> says if you say Nashville three times, does Trapper Haskins randomly <laughs> appear? <laughs> He'll, he'll build a table for you too why is that? right right he'll he'll come in with a guitar he built himself or like oh, or like that is so or awesome like, yeah shout out to Trapper Haskins love that dude what you got oh we got Matt Waters yeah, Matt Waters Matt oh, Waters man. shout out Matt Waters Matt Waters has a show he has a, a live album recording show at Radio Artifact on March 4th for the big crash you guys should uh, check that out he says Matt's as a multi-instrumentalist what instrument did you start on what what did you wish you started on? Well, wish is the key word, I think. Right, right. So I'd say, well, I started on piano, and I'd say I, at that point, you know, I was so young, I didn't know, like, what I really wanted to start on. But I guess I could have, I wish I had started, I guess, the guitar. But, I mean, really starting on piano is, like, really crucial That's for... That's the key. But I'm t oh. <laughs> yes. It's the key. Great question, Matt. I can't sit behind a drum kit and be like, but I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I do that uh, at branches sometimes. Like, oh yeah, they'll yeah. Have, they'll have a joke of some sort. And I thought about doing they that. Sometimes look back at me, and right. if I'm feeling comfortable enough, I'll do it. And right, it gets a couple laughs. And, oh, for sure. And no, that it just makes my my Sunday morning. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sarah, most influential mentors. Most influential or drum mentors or drum influences? Hmm. That's a good question. Thanks, Sarah. <coughs> mentors. Shout out Sarah Gorak. Uh, mentors? I don't know. Mentors. Um, I really enjoyed recording music with Eric Tuffinsome out at Moonlight Studios. Mm -hmm. That guy, I mean, I feel like... Like, I started recording with him in, like, 2013, and we released a few things through him, and I, like, I learned so much from recording with him because he is just so, like, just upfront. Like, yep. he will not pl pull any punches with you. He's not mean about it, but, like, he's just like, no, you can do that better. You can do this. You can do that. You can do this. You mm -hmm. can do that. And I would never fight him on it at all. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, do whatever you say. You need someone like that. Absolutely. And he really kind of crafted a lot of my harmony technique. Because, like, oh, cool. I would think, like, oh, this is the harmony. And then I would go into the studio, and he'd be like, mm -hmm, uh, no, you're flat there. It should be this. And then, like, coach me through that. So I'd say Eric Tuffinson was a incredible mentor in that way mm -hmm. and and not in like a way where he's like i will take you under my wing kind of thing but just i i learned a lot from him growing up and um 
I would probably say probably just Noah Smith. All right. <laughs> Shout we, out Noah Smith. Yeah, I there mean, we go. I mean, from recording with him, I mean, we sit there and talk about life and business and all sorts of things. And the guy is just the guy is just wise and he's mm-hmm. cool as cool as a cucumber at all times. So Shout out Noah Smith. I'd say Noah Smith. Um, mentors, though. But uh, drum influences. Hey, I'm going to cut you off. Cut me off. Uh, speaking of mentorships, uh, Noah does have a program Correct. out there for all you cool kittens and cats. Um, basically, if if you want a mentor, a music mentor, a life mentor, Noah kind of meshes the two together. Right. He's, yeah, he's he he does coaching for up and coming artists. Everything it's called the long cut mindset. Uh, mm-hmm. You can check that out. Yes, and so that's an mm-hmm. awesome program, uh, especially if you're in Kentucky, oh, Cincinnati, man. Northern Kentucky. Um, it, it's just an awesome program, and not only that, it's it's much greater than Noah. It's the community that Absolutely. is involved for sure. With that. And and yeah, he really he really dropped some serious gems in there. Like he mm-hmm. really does. And I'm gonna have to pay for a subscription because I feel left out. <laughs> yes. So Sarah's got all these great questions. Um, drum influences. So growing up, of course, I was influenced by the classic Dave Grohl, which I appreciate you setting the high head up pretty, pretty high for that. High for yeah. you. yeah, you're welcome <laughs> for that. Um, uh, Dave Grohl growing up. Um, but recently, probably like Mike Healy from Papadozio, like with his hi hat work oh, and wow. everything, and yeah, from playing in jam bands, I just like always loved Healy. He was just so razor sharp and playing in kind of pop music in, in that way. It was mm-hmm. like I love the disco beats and just like that real, just tight grooves. My bad. All, all right. Good. Uh, so, sh- what? A- any other drum influences? Mm. Mm. Uh, probably uh, Derek Frost from Alkaline Trio. Okay. Big time, uh, especially as a young buck. Um, other than that, I don't know. I don't like. I I I hear things and I just kind of like yeah. I I don't like kind of like study people's styles and things like that. I I, mm-hmm. I can hear things and pick up on things but i don't be like you know like i just sat there and like watched a million dennis chambers videos and yeah i i feel that um so i'm gonna go i'm gonna do some rapid fire questions rapid fire don't elaborate if you do i'm gonna throw this 50 west bottle uh at my wife no Um, (laughs) i thought that like i thought like Mindy would just have like a sound, like a big like alarm, like a like a game show, like ah, and then I just move on. <laughs> so don't elaborate. Just the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Absolutely. You guys ready for this? I spent a lot of time on these questions. He did. He printed them out. And everything. I fucking <laughs> yeah. so cool. Okay. If Sunday Drives could tour with one band, who would it be? Pine Grove. Favorite local Cincinnati band. Oh. See you in the funnies. Good choice. Favorite drink? <laughs> Favorite drink? Gin and tonic. Oh, sweet. Rolling Stones or the Beatles? Beatles. I knew we were friends. <laughs> if you were if you were stranded on an island and had to pick one instrument, what would you choose? Ukulele. I feel like that's, that's just vibe. the vibe forever. <laughs> <laughs> you get real good at it. Right. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I would get so good at it and be able to show no one. So, yeah. <laughs> It's okay. And those nylon strings, they'll just last forever. They just, they, yeah. Yeah, that's, you make a great point. <laughs> that's true. Christmas or Halloween? Halloween. Favorite local brewery? Oh, local brewery. I mean, Ooh, we're that drinking is, 50 West, that, but yes. it's okay. You can yes. be off-brand if you want. Um, I do really love a good 50 West, but my favorite local brewery, God, it's changed over the years. It was like Urban Artifact at one point. Yeah. It was uh, probably um, mm, probably. Ooh, that's not local. That's Columbus. I was gonna say Brewdog, but no, that's not Cincinnati. Don't they have a Cincinnati location? They though? do. Yeah, it doesn't count. No, mm-hmm. no, we need Cincinnati beer because we're the beer big. St- 
beer big. Big beer city. That's what happens big after city. Uh, six IPAs. Yeah, you know, this is our this is our seventh yeah. one. I'm gonna be staying the night here. Um, <laughs> we got uh, a seven pack at the brewery. <laughs> right. Uh, Ryan, guys, screw it. I knew you were gonna. I should have just. That's said, yeah. What's your favorite local brewery, and why is it Ryan Geist? Um, uh, it's really not. That was just an answer. Okay. Well, they make some <laughs> solid stuff. They, so. they they do, but again, like I don't know, Taft's like there's so many different mm-hmm. like different ones, but I do love a brew dog. I love that Elvis juice. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> I I agree, man. Um, if you, if, how did I come up with these? If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Superpower, uh, probably flight, because um, you know I could have super strength and everything, but like I grew up watching Dragon Ball Z, and mm-hmm. you know that 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 just looks like so much fun, just like taking off and flying to places that you can get across the world in like fifteen twenty minutes. Yeah. It would make touring a lot easier. Well, I couldn't carry all my stuff, but yeah. like it's, I could, you know, I could, right, you know, I could be like. I want to go to, you know, Barcelona this weekend mm-hmm. and then just like be there in like, you know, 18, 20 seconds. I love it. This is a, I hope my buddy Mark Murkoff is watching. Um, Biggie or Tupac? Oh, so that is a tough question. Uh, I'm going to make a lot of people mad with this. Uh, Tupac, only because I feel like. A, Everyone says that Biggie is. Oh wait, am I elaborating? Am I? Am I, am I not supposed to do that? Kind of are, but <laughs> what, what, where are we at? Okay, yeah. we're we're doing good on time. I just want to. <laughs> I just want to say, like, okay, just for the record, Biggie only had his two albums, and he was he actually died before the second one even got released. He and everyone's like, oh, Biggie's so good because he only had those two albums. And I'm not saying Biggie wouldn't have made amazing stuff later. It's always a third album that sucks. So right, he, third he or fourth or fifth <laughs> or sixth. Like, if Biggie was still around by the year, like, you know, 2010, if Biggie was still dropping music, people would be like, Biggie fell off. But the yeah. fact that he was so young and so influential and died when he did, you know, when you die, you're a legend. But I just think Tupac has a bigger catalog and just more to choose from, so Tupac. You know, it's funny you answer that way, but yet... You chose the Beatles over the Rolling Stones, even Big time. though they've had way longer career. Absolutely, I grew up with the Beatles. I fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Some cool. of my favorite bands of all Devil's time. Advocate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not uh, a Stones fan. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Uh, pineapples on pizza? Yes or no? Big yes. Big, I'm a fan. Big yes. I'm a fan. You, I mean, <laughs> you put pineapples in anything, I'll eat it. I'm right there with you. All right. You put pineapples on ice cream? It's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? If you could have a drink with any celebrity, who would it be? Any and why celebrity. would it be Dave Grohl? It wouldn't be Dave Grohl. It wouldn't be Dave Grohl. Uh, a drink with any celebrity. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, probably Elon Musk, even if, we, if we can wow. con- consider him a celebrity. Only because, like, so. only because he says some wild stuff. You know, you start drinking with him and you're like, Elon. What do you for real know, yeah. dude? What are you drinking? <laughs> <laughs> and like, I know you say this and that in interviews, but like, let's talk. Let's talk brass tacks here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What would you do if you won the lottery? I would buy a van and not like a, oh, I'm going to buy a van and move and, you know, live out Don't of the van you. forever. Like, mm-hmm. no, I'm going to buy like a big, uh, Big, like, like a Mercedes Sprinter? Yeah. Like that yeah, type of? Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Big. Yeah, like that kind of thing. And, uh, well, it depends on how much the lottery was. But, you know, I wouldn't be too crazy with it because okay. I know how fast it goes. Mm-hmm. Invest so, in some ETFs. Right. You know, make my own NFTs and stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, invest in crypto, play the stock market. And then I'll run out of all of that, all of that lottery money and have almost nothing to show for it. So, cheers. It, it all, like lives, a typical it all lives on the blockchain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Last question. East side or west side? West side. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm an what? adopted son of the east. I love the east side. Most of my friends and confidants are over here. But um, born and raised west side, still live there today. As sad as that sounds. Honorary but, um, east sider. I'm an honorary east sider. I I do love it over here. I have gotten gotten the lay of the land 
It's a pretty big place over here. Mm-hmm. It's pretty pretty wide because the west side, you know, if you go too far west, that's just Indiana. And that's not even Ohio anymore. So, fair enough. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for <laughs> the rapid fire. The rapid fire questions. Um, let's jam a little bit, man. Let's and, go. Um, in that little period of us jamming, if you guys have any other questions, comments, concerns, prayers. Send them our way. Um, we're gonna just jam for a couple more minutes. Hop back on. One like equals one pray. <laughs> and then we'll we'll uh, wrap things up here in a little bit. And uh, in true beats and brews fashion, I'm gonna let my guest lay down the beat, and then Start I'll just off. sprinkle some stuff right. in. Did a little dance beat last time. We'll just go. fun <clears throat> definitely a little different from the first one after having the <laughs> a couple beer and a half yeah. for those of you at home do not try this at home do not drink and drum it's dangerous i'm gonna tell you it is especially if you're playing with a click track we're just kind of freeform jamming and having fun but if you're playing to a click track i'm speaking from experience here good old sitting duck <coughs> studios in the house sitting duck in the house Brandon Feldkamp, Jack Heffron, Adam Lee in the house. Thank you guys so much for chiming in, hanging out with us. Oh, oh, uh, Sarah said, I want to hear some drum gig embarrassing stories. Do I have time for one embarrassing story? You have all night for embarrassing stories. (laughs) That's what I specialize in. Oh, okay. All right. Worst drum gig ever. Actually, you go first. I want to hear your worst drum gig. Oh, man. We all go through them. (laughs) 
Worst drum gig ever? I had I had one gig where one of my crash stands just like would not hold up. Mm -hmm. It just fell like big, just like banging like all over my stuff. Symbols yeah. falling over. Um Probably my worst drum gig was uh, I was playing at Urban Artifact and I, I just like beat a hole straight through the kick drum, like mid in the middle of the set. Wow, that's a real salty thing because it's not just like, it's hey, get a new kick that. drum, right? <laughs> but we did. We had to be like, hey, can any of the other bands like give us a kick drum? And it was mm -hmm. very, very embarrassing. I actually uh, travel with a spare kick drum head. Fortunately, have never had to use it, but... Redundancy, gotta have it. I know other guys that they actually set up a second pedal that also hits their main kick drum just in case their kick Chain drum beater yeah. like, goes to shit. Right. And I've never had that happen before either, but yeah. could you imagine how terrible that would be? Oh, I've, <laughs> I've had my chain on my pedal just like fall off in the middle of something mm -hmm. and then yeah you have to like redo it and like yeah yeah there's been plenty of times where like in the early days you'd have that dreaded uh bass drum uh slipping away from you oh but then you learn to just bring Buy the a carpet rug. yeah you know, basic <laughs> basic things like that which yeah. for some reason people still i actually don't tried do. to bum a rug a few years ago and i said like hey drummer friends I have a question. I had like 10 people hit me up immediately. They're like, what's up? And I'm like, I need a rug. And they're like, oh, I don't have one of those. I was like, why does no one have a rug? Typical drummer. So I'm going to start the Drummer Rug Foundation. <laughs> yeah, that's We're awesome. We're going to be donating rugs to drummers all over the city and the continental USA. You totally should. Um, you know, working production. So production is one of my side hustles. I love it. But what's it kills me a little bit in, inside every time there's a gig and the drummer shows up and he forgets his drum throne, he for he forgets a drum rug or he forgets a hi hat clutch. The, the clutch? Yeah, uh, oh. that happens like every week. And it's, so you uh, have like a drawer of all of those things, like a drawer of no, clutches. No, we don't. And, uh. and in fact, uh, <laughs> you have to bring your own in your pocket. What I've yeah. done is uh, I've actually. I always have a my drum set in my car, and there's been a handful of times where I've bailed the drummer out, like, "Hey, here's my rug. No way. Here's my hi hat clutch." I'm like, a, I'm like a touring act, like, yeah, jeez, yeah, it's 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 pretty crazy. Um, that should be like in the advance sheet or something, like, "Hey, we're coming into town. We need a hi hat clutch <laughs> and a yeah. drum rug." It's like, like saying, "Hey, we need we need a guitar tuner." Right, and like a bunch of picks. We have no picks. <laughs> yeah, and a guitar <laughs> strap. Yeah. Just the strap. Damn. We have everything else. <laughs> um, yeah, as far as the other terrible gigs, honestly, normally they're not. It's you've, not. You've just had good gigs all your life, haven't you? I've so? had great <laughs> gigs all my life. It's all the other people that I play with that suck. <laughs> no, That's just I'm how it kidding. goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, actually, not to get uh, super deep, but I'm going to a little Do bit, it. tiny bit. Do it. Probably the the worst gig scenario that I remember is uh, the day that my dad passed away. Mm. Um, I was supposed to play a gig with Trademark Aaron, and we had been promoting it, promoting it. Uh, Trademark. And it, and it was that day. And it, it was that day. In fact, yeah. Um, yeah. I was <coughs> visiting my dad in the hospital. Trademark was there. My buddy Mark was there, and, and my dad just like, you guys going to fuck shit up tonight at the gig? Right. <laughs> and it's like, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to go to that gig tonight, Dad. And um, so Trademark agreed that he was going to fulfill the gig duties mm -hmm. and ended up, you know, my dad passed away a couple hours later, and um, Trademark went and played the gig, and I booked the gig, and I was promoting it, and so, obviously, it was like the worst day of my life. Right. So, not only that, but the venue tried to short trademark mm. after after the gig. So, it was just like, it was just a shitstorm. Right. The worst case scenario, and it's like the last thing I want to deal with is right. a, a so, terrible gig in a venue that's, that's trying to short us on what right. we agreed upon. So... I wasn't physically there. I didn't play it, but that that's like the worst case scenario that I can think of. So your worst drum gig, you weren't even at. Exactly. So that's pretty awesome. I guess it. I mean, I mean, you know, it's a terrible day to 
have that happen to mm-hmm. you. And but um, the fact that he went through with it anyway, you know, is yeah. Trademark took care of it, and <clears throat> right. all of our followers also took care of the venue and like oh, put, sure. a, put them on blast. Sure. And we we did your part. They, they paid up, and they yeah. made, they made the venue made it right. Yeah. But um, at that day was just uh, ter- oh yeah. Ter- I'm, I can only imagine, man. Yep. I can only imagine. Yeah. Um, moving on. Uh, I'm going to wrap things up here, but the wrap one thing that I really want to know is, do you have anything that you really want to promote at the moment? Uh, where can people find you on social media? Um, Sunday drives. You can find us S U N D A E drives. That's an ice cream Sunday drives and it's multiple drives. So it's a plural drives. Mm-hmm. People are like, Oh, Sunday drive. Cool. I'm like, well, it's Sunday drives, Sunday drives. Um, but you can find us anywhere, um, anywhere that you can stream music. Um, we're working on our TikTok right now, we're trying to get our TikTok game. Oh, I'm up. sorry. How's that going? What for do you me? mean you're sorry? <laughs> that's that's where everything is. I'm 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 convinced that if you're not on TikTok, you don't even know what's going on in the world anymore. I can't argue with that. <laughs> Here I am, you're still like, trying to do a Facebook live <laughs> when everyone's on TikTok instead. Right, and they're like, you know, right? They're like making all crazy live streams and everything, and they're like, you know, 14 years old, and they know all this stuff. 15 million followers. Right, and views, right, right. Because like, we uh, recently just kind of got into a thing where about we're trying to build our DSP following, so. Mm-hmm. Going through the the avenues of like TikTok and you know not just like a real like hey stream our music but just kind of like creative ways to make content and things like that. Um, other than that, um, we got some singles coming out, so just keep your ear to the ground for that. We'll okay. be dropping some stuff. Other than that, promotion wise, uh, shout out Tiami Media, my brother Mike. If you need any videos or anything like that, you know he's content gold. And um, uh, shout out Adam Lee. Love you. That's beautiful. I think we should probably end it there. <laughs> Everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with Nick and I. Thank um, you, Aaron. Thank you so much for coming, man. Uh, it Had a blast. Re- it really means a lot. And this is just, this is the very first live stream for Beats and Brews. There's learning curves. It's it's going to continue to get better and easier, and I'm I'm excited for that process. I think you had a I I think you had a great little audience for your uh, for your first stream here. So I, I everybody right. tuned in right now. Remember, this is uh, this is not just a one and done thing. You're going to be seeing more of Mr. Aaron Roy. So thank you, sir. Keep it locked. And thank you everybody that has tuned in and uh, chimed in. It, it really means a lot, and we had so much fun. Yeah. Um, with that, let's just jam a little bit more. Let's jam then, it out. Um, We'll wrap things up. All right. All right. I'm going to let you start this one. How about that? I'm not going to argue.
Thank you guys. We'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.